Welcome to this version of Design Fusion Solid Edge blog, where we'll look at part one of the Solid Edge University 2023 Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks. These tips and tricks are inspired by questions from our tech line and questions received from training. Users do not have to be on Solid Edge 2023 for these tips and tricks. Tips and tricks number one, the clean sketch command. Ideal for working with imported 2D data, the clean sketch command is used to move or delete redundant and unwanted elements from a sketch. Duplicate items can be deleted or moved to a different sketch layer. It's important to note that the clean sketch command does not move or delete sketch elements with relationships assigned to them. Small arcs and lines less than a user-defined length can be moved or deleted as well. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. To demonstrate the clean sketch command, I've opened a couple of 2D drawings here. The first drawing has several shapes with lots of B-spline geometry in it. And you can see all the different control points, edit points, and so forth. Let's launch the clean sketch command. And with the clean sketch command, one of the things we can do, you'll notice when I open the options, one of the first things listed here is to clean B spline curves. Then we can either delete elements that will be cleaned or we can put them on a different layer. The first time we'll use delete. And then we can also delete identical elements, point elements, and small lines and arcs less than a given size can be cleaned up. So let's say OK to this. I then identify what 2D geometry I want cleaned, and I'll do that with a fence select. Once I select the geometry, I just hit finish, and the command is done. If we examine the results, you'll notice that the B splines have been simplified, a lot less control and edit points, for example, yet the overall geometry has remained the same. Let's look at a second drawing that I have here, and this is all analytic geometry, no B splines, just arcs, lines, etc. I'll launch the clean sketch command again. And in the options, instead of deleting any geometry that's cleaned up, I'm actually going to move it to a different layer. And I'll use the layer here called clean. I'm actually creating a new layer on the fly. I'll click OK to the options. I'll select the geometry I want cleaned. And I'll click finish. To see what was removed from this, let's open our cleaned layer and say show only. And you can see all the duplicate geometry that was in there. I can now manually delete this if I wish. I'll return back to the layers and say show all layers. And I now have my nice clean sketch to work with. Tips and tricks number two, lock relationship in sketching. The lock command, which puts down the lock relationship, controls elements and key points so they cannot be modified during certain operations. The lock command is available in 2D and 3D sketches and in draft. The lock command is ideal for fixing key points in space. This is very useful for helping you control the direction in which an element can increase its size when you change a dimension or for fixing points when you're doing certain kinematic motion, such as locking down the center of a circle. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge. I'm starting this demo inside of a sketch environment where I'll make a change to this dimension and I'll change it from 100 to 125. Notice that the left end moves out. Unfortunately, I would prefer the other side to move. I can achieve this by locking the endpoint, which fixes it in space. Notice the little handle that appears there. I'll go and change this value now to 125, and it expands in my preferred direction. Another example here is the arc. Let's change the length of this to 150. And although it does change the length, notice how the position changed. Let's undo this, and I'll apply a lock constraint to the center of this arc. 
Once again, you see the handle appear there. Now if I change the value, you'll see that it doesn't shift the arc. It stays centered on that lock constraint. Like any other sketch constraint, the lock constraint can be deleted by selecting the handle and deleting it. So this can be a temporary constraint or a permanent constraint. Tips and tricks number three, mice hotkeys in sketching. When drawing and manipulating 2D elements, shortcut keys are available to snap to key points and intersection points. You simply highlight the element with your cursor, and then you can use either the M key for midpoint, I for intersection, C for center, or E for endpoint. To better understand how this works, let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. So this is just a quick example of using the mice keys. I'll select the drawing command I want to use, in this case the line command, and then I'll hover over this line and I'll hit the letter E, and I'll hover over this line and hit the letter E. And notice in both cases it went to the closest endpoint. I'll select another drawing command. This time I'll hover over this line and hit the letter M. And then I'll hover over this circle and hit the letter C. And notice the line is created between the midpoint of the baseline and the center point of the circle. Staying in this drawing command, I'll hover over this line and hit the letter I. Notice the quick pick comes up and gives me, in this case, three intersection points. I want to use this intersection point up here. So I'll select that from the quick pick and it draws the line up to the top intersection point. So there's a quick look on how you can use the MICE keys for constraining your sketch in Solid Edge. Tips and tricks number four, cross curve command. Many users have avoided learning the surfacing commands, feeling that they don't do surfacing, so why should they learn them? However, many of the surfacing commands can ease and speed up the process of solid modeling. Take the cross curve command, for example. This command creates a 3D curve at the intersection of two curves. It works much like the intersection curve command, yet it does not need existing surfaces to create a curve. This following demonstration will show you how this simple curve command aided in creating a solid model. I was once asked the quickest and easiest way to make a ladder rung as shown here. And this is a good example where you can use the cross curve command. I started by creating two sketches. First I created a top view of what the ladder rung would look like. And then I created a side view of what the ladder rung would look like. And with these two centerline sketches, I can create the ladder rung. To do this, I went up to the Surfacing tab, and in the Curves group, I select the Cross Curve command, and then I just follow the prompts. I'll select my first cross curve here, and it doesn't matter which one you select first. I'll accept this, and then I'll select my second one, and accept that. The system will then generate my cross curve. You can imagine creating two surfaces and creating an intersection curve, and the result would be the same. But this is a little faster because you don't have to create the surfaces. With the cross curve now, I can easily create my ladder rung. I start by creating a sketch on a plane normal to the curve. From the pull down, I'll select plane normal to curve and select one end of the cross curve. On that plane, I'll draw my circle of a set diameter, whatever the customer preferred. Once I have my sketch drawn, I can close it and hit Finish. And then I'll select the Sweat Protrusion command. For my Sweat Protrusion, I'll select Single Path and Cross Section. For my Guide Path, I select the Cross Curve. And for my cross section, I select the sketch. And very quickly, you see that I've created this 3D ladder rung. Using a total of three simple sketches, 
a cross curve command, and a swept protrusion command. This brings us to the end of part one of the Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks as shown at Solid Edge University 2023. If you want to learn more, check out our online training webpage at the link shown on this slide.